Chapter 11. After explaining the list and the problems you had to your father, you got directly what you wanted, and because of that you now have your own escort of proper knights loyal to House Lannister with you. It's great that your father doesn't do things half-heartedly, though that it was such an non-issue still surprised you a bit, but you did know that he cares a great deal about you, your siblings, and your mother, so perhaps you shouldn't see him as the Lord of the Rock all the time. Yes, you really should work on that a bit more, especially seeing as your father is a lot more than just a title, though it's hard to describe him without it, with him being the perfect image of a high noble and all that. Hence, you're from time to time unsure if it's a front or if he is just trying to be a good example for you and your siblings. You do want to believe the latter, but maybe he is really not much beyond his title, though you don't want to think of him that way. From a certain point of view, he seems somewhat fragile now that the thought has infested your mind, and you have to wonder what would be left of your father if one took the title away from him. But that's a bit to mean too seriously consider it any further, you after all love your father no matter his flaws, though if the king would do any better would be interesting, and if your father doesn't get his marriage you might even find it out, but you will have to wait and see. He really wants that throne even though it would only weaken our house if we actually claimed it, yet to your relief the king is a piece of crap, and while you weren't there when the king insulted your father you're now sure that this friendship won't hold forever. You decide to not bother trying to visit the royal family for the duration of their visit, as do not annoy your father when he is already a step away from having someone's head on a spike. You do wonder for a bit what he could have said to create so much anger in your father but in the end you decide that you had misspent enough time already thinking about useless stuff, and so you simply can't allow yourself to waste so much time anymore. Instead, you chose to focus on the future, or more precisely how to handle the future enemies of your house, for while you had often fantasized about how to crush them, having some real insight into the relationship between the capital and the rock will allow you to make some actually acceptable plans for the wars to come. You often thought about what your ability could contribute to the struggles ahead, and while using your strength would certainly be entertaining, it could also upset the proper order of the world, for what good would it do if your enemies decide to just submit, that really isn't how humans should live in your opinion. Yet simply crushing all resistance would probably help your family and your father in particular the most, so you're a bit unsure about the matter of using or not using your ability on the battlefield. Pushing aside the issue of putting either your family or your duty as a human first, you can see that you will have a very simple time when everything begins to break down, though you decide to begin your work a bit earlier so as to not create yourself additional time pressure later on. And yes, while it would certainly upset the order of the world if you use your ability to its full extent on every battlefield, the same can hardly be said for using it to give the richest house, namely your house, some more strength in terms of resources, or at least you hope that it wouldn't prevent the wars to come, for you're confident that your family will persist, as is proper. Thus, the question becomes how you're going to enrich your house, and you decide after a moment of thought that half measures aren't going to satisfy you, so gold and gems it is. You will simply have to wait for the king to depart and then ask for permission and the most stressful part will already be over, yet while extracting gold remains from the stone is quite simple just like the creation of chests full of gems, keeping that all contained to the rock will take some preparation, that you can say without a doubt. For if this information gets out you could have your war a good bit earlier than you want, and it would put your loved ones in danger as well, so this truly is a situation in which patience is a virtue. Besides, it's not like you can't wait for a bit as long as you get it done when it's time, everything should work out just fine, and when the rock's forces are unmatched the Westerlands could be truly united under the lion banner, but you still don't think that your father's dream of the crown is a plausible one, at least not one that rules all of the kingdoms. Mayhaps with enough resources a third of the seven kingdoms could be won, but the rest is truly and utterly worthless, no they are worse than just worthless, seeing as they will bleed us dry of manpower sooner or later. Holding the northern dawn would bring attrition just with their weather, then next comes the reach, which will take enormous amounts of troops to garrison, and the veil would force us to deal with the mountain clans that gave the knights of House Arryn trouble for centuries, yeah, this just won't work out, it's just not worth it, and you hope that your father will be able to accept this when the time comes, for you can't do everything in one push it's just not possible. Chapter 12. Two weeks after your fourth birthday, you can feel that the time has come to begin your work in earnest, and you actually have a good deal of difficulty suppressing your excitement. Though suppress it you did, 
and so you perfectly hold your composure while meeting with your father to ask for the storage chamber you would need to begin. And it didn't take much to get the chamber, seeing as your father was in good spirits since the king's departure, though the lessons he wanted to give you and your siblings never manifested. Whatever your father had planned must have been disturbed by what the king had said to him, or perhaps your siblings got their lessons and you were simply let out for whatever reason, though it could also be that it was decided that your mother would be teaching you three. In the end, the thing that matters is that you got what you needed in a timely manner, for you wanted to surprise your father before he had to leave for the capital once more, yes, aren't you the sweetest of daughters one can have? Your delusions aside, you truly wanted to make him happy before his journey to the man he now no longer sees as good company begins, for while he certainly won't show it, you know that the coming years will be tiresome for him. And it is as they say, the darker the future, the brighter the past, so now is a perfect moment to bring your father some lasting happiness. And with that thought in mind, you trace your hand along the walls of the corridor you're in, not because you need to do so, but simply because it doesn't hurt to save some stamina for later. Tiring out hasn't been a problem since you came to this world, but having something go wrong with what you're planning would surely create some issues, so it's better to be safe than sorry. While you continue your walk, you focus on the rock behind the wall that makes up your home, and within it, you can feel the many impurities you were seeking, thus you begin collecting them. Seeing as you can't control gold, you decide that it would be best if it wasn't literal dust you were collecting, and so you swiftly exert a little pressure upon the gold before you regulate the stone cold again. You keep on doing so while you slowly make your way towards the next corridor, where you continue the process until you turn around and bring your other hand to the wall, before beginning your stroll back up the hallway. Once you're back at your starting point you set in motion the drawing out of the gold, which is now a lot easier, as can clearly be seen by the amount of grey sludge coming out of the walls, though how pure the gold will be is still a mystery to you. After patching up the walls and the rock behind them, you decide to take your ball of sludge into the storage chamber, for walking around with a ball of molten metals isn't exactly what you would call safe. But all in all you're still quite satisfied with your gains. Thus your internal complaining of your safety is more a way to pass the time and a bit of pressure to improve rather than anything else. Perhaps melting the gold and other metals wasn't that efficient seeing as you will still have to wait for it to cool down, but it's a good first attempt. You don't take all that long to reach the chamber and thanks to your guards the journey happened without bumping into anyone as well, which you're quite thankful for, though that they are so loyal that they didn't once ask any annoying questions was still a surprise to you. Perhaps you owe your father more than you realized, but you're sure that you will be able to pay your debt soon enough, and so while thinking these thoughts you swiftly create the molds that will hold the ingots and leave for the next corridor you found promising. You continue this for a week, but sadly only in the daylight hours, simply because you still have some secrets you aren't too fond of sharing, but it might just be better that way, seeing as the storage chamber had a rather severe heating, or perhaps rather cooling problem. Hence only you could actually enter it for the moment. Heat, as it surprisingly turns out, isn't one of your weaknesses anymore, which makes sense from a certain point of view, but really only from that one very narrow one. Rock and stone melt, not just when you're the one that makes it do so, but all the time, it's so natural that it might as well be its natural form, and it's once more something you should have seen coming, yet you didn't. You aren't normal that is something you learned on the first night in this world, but your connection to the stones surrounding you is even more abnormal, yes, one could say that you're a kindred spirit to it. So this became your normal state of being, so much so that you didn't waste all that many thoughts on the matter, and that even though you saw in your last life just how much molten rock exists deep within the world, yes, when thinking back on how entire regions could be drowned in it without anyone taking any notice, it seems quite foolish to think a spirit of ore to rock and stone would share the human weakness of heat or fire, though you won't just hold your hand in the next open flame to satisfy yourself with some proof of the latter. Well, mayhaps trying a finger wouldn't hurt, but then harming yourself wouldn't really raise your parents' opinion of your mental state, and you don't have any interest in having to go back to the old man so soon. It's all a bit troubling. But as long as your hiccups don't harm your family, it's not something worth getting truly aggravated over. With the thought having left your mind, you look around the chamber now full of stacked and still unstacked ingots and wonder if you will get at least a few head pats out of this. Chapter 13. Life is great for you, and it didn't even come at the cost of someone else's detriment, or suffering, 
it truly is delightful to experience new things, though it won't stop you from performing your duties as a benefactor of such good fortune. For you already love this world quite a lot, in fact with it being so beautifully savage, you would have to wonder what kind of warlord wouldn't cherish such a magnificent planet. You for one will do anything to purify it as soon as possible, as to bring forth the greatness of this world and all of humanity on it. Who knows, mayhaps you will fulfill your duties and survive at the same time, with how it's going, though you still won't excuse a loss of determination, for what good is it that there are such beautiful things like trial by combat if scum is still able to hold on to power in the world. Yes, it truly can't be overstated just how much the small things matter, simply because human civilization needs more than the rule of the strong. It certainly still requires the stability drawn from it to properly govern a human nation, but there are so many steps down the social order that even the greatest leader will be forced into ruin. You can imagine quite clearly how some random peasant never sees his ruler and only ever interacted with the nation through the noble or knight ruling directly over him, and what abilities the lord has at the end of the day becomes more and more irrelevant the larger the nation, which is just a waste of human potential from your point of view. But the best of the best could create a magnificent kingdom under the rule of a truly great king, and if they as well have the finest of subordinates under them a golden age is all but guaranteed. You never understood why it was so hard to understand that one might not be suited for a position of power, and that the better you are, the higher you should stand in a properly working world, but that's sadly not how things end up being in most nations, as you have seen many times. The reason for your contemplation of this matter was your father, for while you got your head pats out of your efforts, you also got another piece to the puzzle that is your father, and you don't like it at all. For the effects your present had on your father were too great in your opinion, it was like a few million gold coins worth of ingots actually took a hefty burden off his shoulders, a burden you didn't know was there, which is rather troubling. You're of course pleased that you could do something to help out your family, but that you overlooked something once more is somewhat annoying and you decide you will have to put a bit of work in to fix the issue if it's troubling him to such an extent. And you're sure that you can solve the problem quite easily, seeing as the actual reason for your father's troubles was dealt with some years ago, in fact, you weren't even born when the issue was resolved. Though rebellions tend to be more problematic when it comes to matters of the aftermath than wars, so it isn't all that surprising to you, and after you swiftly asked your mother and father, as well as the old man about the details you know enough to see from where the problem is coming from. During the last rebellion in the Westerlands your father put his foot down and made sure that no one would ever try to usurp your family's position again, though in doing so he destroyed two houses and one of the greatest defenses the lands of House Lannister had to protect themselves. Which seeing as your father takes his duties as the defender and warden of the West seriously meant he couldn't let his lands remain sapped of even the smallest bit of strength, and so he had to rebuild, and that out of his own pockets, for demanding gold from your vassals to mend damage you did yourself while you live on a gold mine isn't something a sane man would do. While rebuilding the lost strength already cost quite a bit of gold, expanding and fortifying the many castles strewn all over the Westerlands wasn't the only drain your family had to suffer for a new problem came up that made the situation even worse. The issue in question were the mines which exhausted some of the richest veins, and so until new ones were found came forth with only a fraction of their usual yield, forcing your family to tap into the reserves, which with the taxes of two houses gone meant that your father could see the wealth created over generations go down by the day. All in all, your father tried to recreate the benefits of a war out of his own pockets with the expected results, for while losing a few thousand troops is of little matter to the Westerlands, seeing as they can be replaced in a matter of weeks, having to do so alone without everyone working as one to win a conflict is expensive. And while the damage will be undone in just a few decades with the small folk being more or less untouched, the expended reserves needed for a potential war won't be so easily replaced, all things your father knows, and all things you can help out with. It's truly astonishing how much a simple attempt to simulate the benefits of war constrains such a strong and wealthy house, or perhaps it's just that humans under pressure are simply that amazing. From the moment two nations go at it, it begins, logistic pressure for one makes a lord almost immediately consider new or better roads and larger warehouses and barracks, while the pressure of one's life being at risk makes even the most stingy of people find some way to put another layer of just about any kind of defense between them and the threat. Trying to more or less sell the two houses as casualties of war and move on improving the land in a thousand different places as if one had happened was quite foolhardy of your father. 
Perhaps if he hadn't put the rebels down so early he could have saved himself some gold in the long run. Chapter 14. Well, it is what it is, and that gold remains the most revered matter a man can own even if he lives on top of a gold mine is hardly something new to you, though it's the first time you actually see how much so little of it can change a man's state of mind. You decide that it's good that you won't be lacking it in the future, and move on from the event and focus on being a good girl, yes. Perhaps you could dedicate some of your time to improve your relationship with your sister. For you can clearly see that it's needed with how much she's glaring at you, and while it's cute beyond belief, you would still prefer if Cersei wouldn't hate you when she grows up. So getting more attention from your father when he's back home again will most likely be impossible which while annoying is still something you'll gladly put up with to not make your sister even more upset. Though what's in your opinion more problematic is that to succeed you also can't gain too much attention from your mother. This wouldn't normally be a problem, if you hadn't planned to split your efforts to help your family into giving the gold to your father and the gems to your mother, which now has become quite impossible. And you know that just about everything you do with your ability will make you look worse in her eyes, as if you were actually trying to steal the attention away from her, as childish as that sounds, and so you're stuck with practically nothing to do. If you focus on your lessons you will get nothing but praise you're sure of it, yet being praised by your mother wouldn't help you in achieving your goal, and beyond learning and practicing your ability you don't quite know what to do with yourself. Not long after you decided to improve your relationship with Cersei you try to approach your brother, seeing as you aren't exactly a natural talent when it comes to dealing with children you thought you might benefit from his good standing with Cersei. But that was the wrong thing to do you realized, and you will have to put in a good deal of effort to smooth over that particular mistake, though you're getting rather agitated as well seeing as Jamie is your brother as well. That you aren't sleeping in the same chamber as your siblings doesn't mean that you will just step aside to please your sister. So you decide to talk with your mother about it to see if she can't help you out a bit. Mother, can you help me with a problem? What do you need help with, Azami? Well, Cersei doesn't like me anymore. Is that so? How would you like me to help with that? Shouldn't you simply apologize if you did something wrong? Isn't that just common sense, little cub? No, I see it every time we are together. She's annoyed with getting less attention than me, and I don't know how to change that, mother. It really isn't because I did something wrong, she's just angry that I'm better than her in about everything I do, and get actual praise for it. Are you sure you didn't say something hurtful, because that doesn't sound like Cersei at all, Azami? What was that supposed to mean, you didn't do anything but help your family to draw her ire, there's no need to think more about something so obvious is there. And even if you screwed up somewhere along the way, why were you the one being branded as the wrongdoer now? You hadn't even really spoken with Cersei for the gods sake, how in the world could she come to the conclusion that you did anything wrong, and that after putting in so much effort into being a good daughter, you decide to leave your mother's chamber, so as to not give the nonsensical comments the light of day, and you admit if only to yourself, that you're quite disappointed as you do so, perhaps it isn't worth the effort, and it's better if Cersei has some anger in her rather than you working yourself up over it. It's fine though. She's just a child, she will get over it eventually, and even your mother can make mistakes, so holding a grudge over something so silly seems wrong to you. For the time being you will need a simple purpose, something to do that doesn't involve your family, just so you can get your head a bit clearer again, and so you decide to leave the rock for a week or so. For you realized after a few seconds of thought that this would be something much more enjoyable than having to put up with your siblings and mother, and whatever aggravating matter would surely come up. Yes, you quite like that plan, and with your knights at your side no one could say that doing so would be too dangerous, thus you resolve yourself to put up with whatever punishment you might get out of this, though with how much your head needs some rest right now that doesn't concern you all that much. Who knows you could even find something of interest in the town, mayhaps the harbour would be worth your time, for what corner of the world wouldn't want to trade with a Lannister? You can't help but admire your own quick thinking, and so you happily make your way to your camber to get yourself a small casket to begin creating some pretty gems to trade with. And hopefully salvage a part of your plan so as to still benefit the house with your excursion. Yes, that doesn't sound so bad at all. You go buy stuff you like, help out your family in spreading the wealth of House Lannister. And that all to not annoy your sister in giving your gems to your mother, who knows, maybe it even saves you from punishment. You're truly a genius it seems. Chapter 15. 
You got done with creating the gems you wanted to trade a few moments before you actually opened the casket you had chosen for the occasion, and so you quickly decided there would be little in the way of reason to stick around, if you want to continue with your plan. So with you a knights in tow you make your way out of the rock proper towards your home's harbour just a bit deeper, so as to take a ship, which would be the fastest way to really secure your little excursion, even if your absence was noticed the moment you will have left the rock. For when you decide to do something you would prefer if it was indeed done right, and being interrupted wouldn't do, even in such trivial things as going to Lannisport, especially seeing as it could cost you quite a bit more than merely a few hours or days of your time. It could cost you your father's trust instead, if you just screwed up badly enough, though you can hardly believe that it would truly come to it, with how little resistance you're currently facing, and you being you, on top of that. Mayhaps, everything will go just fine or perhaps everything will go terribly wrong, but you immediately decide you would enjoy the town, so that's what you will do, it will be entertaining at the very least, even if the aftermath might be the opposite. And so you were holding under that thought while you enjoyed the sea for a bit, it has been a rather long time, which you do admit is more clear to you now than it was in your last life. But admiring nature takes time, and that was something no one you ever met had truly enough of yet you're reminded of why it can also be very beneficial if one is in the right state of mind, which you were if only for the few minutes the ship took to bring you and your companions into the harbour. Two rather interesting ideas manifested and then further developed in your mind while you looked around for the nearest merchant guild, but you're unsure if you really should put in the effort to create a ship made out of stone, seeing as that would bring a good amount of negative attention to the Westerlands. On the other hand, you can't help but wonder if it could really weaken the position of your house that much, but you soon focus on the little white cub sitting on your left shoulder. So yes, while that idea is rather amusing it doesn't seem like it would be of much use, so for the time being you drop the thought, seeing as you can't really make the ship look like a stuffed animal to hide what it really is. Then again having absolute naval superiority would help with the logistic pressure, and the Iron Islands could be taken easily if one can stop them from fishing or so you guess, who knows, mayhaps they would just eat their thralls. You of course didn't just stop walking while you pondered the advantages of holding the sea in the coming wars, so you weren't surprised to find yourself before the greatest building the port of Lannisport houses, and even less so to find yourself going through the streets with 2000 gold dragons shortly after exiting. For you were sure that your gems would be quite valuable after you made them with the help of your father's book though having to actually point out that you would put them all to the sword if you later learned that they had tried to trick you was still a bit irritating, how could someone dare to even consider scamming the house that protects them, shouldn't they know their place a bit better? Choosing to ignore the greedy sheep, you instead look around the town in an effort to see if there was indeed something of use, but there was nothing you could find, though you doubted you would have any success at the first day anyway. So you soon chose to order your knights to buy you an inn to stay in, while you will look if the greater merchants deeper in the town own anything that might be of value to you, as to not end the first day empty-handed. You continue your stroll through Lannisport deep into the night, so as to see if the remaining merchants are a bit more interesting than the ones you looked at for the better half of the day, though that hope soon leaves you, and you have to realize that it's just a normal city. It of course makes some sense that your home is the place that's abnormal. Yet you truly hoped that Lannisport as one of the continent's largest cities would hold something of interest. Quite literally anything would have done, but you can't be lucky all the time, so you decide that it's still fine for your first day in the city. You thought that as one of the greatest realms on the continent the Westerlands should be able to bring forth the best in the human race, yet even after searching for hours the capital of the Westerlands if you would even call it that as it is, has you left disappointed. The term small folk makes a lot more sense now and while you're fine with not finding anything of value, finding that mess doesn't sit right with you, at all, for this isn't how a human being should live, you have seen refugees that had it better than some of those poor souls you found. Once you do lie down to sleep, you quickly decide to change your mission, for you genuinely feel for those people, but then you would have to fix the lands of your family before you can move on to the world anyway, so you guess helping out a few thousand sheep, even if they remain such wouldn't be a total waste of time. And who knows, mayhaps your luck will return in the coming week, so as to allow you to get some decent presents for your siblings, and even if nothing changes, you can always invest a bit more hope, it's quite cheap after all.